Hello and welcome. My name's Leanne. I live in Australia and this is my crafty cupboard. Good morning. I thought you might enjoy this rather beautiful sunrise. Unfortunately, it's not coming out as red on the camera as it is in real life. Well, I have had the loveliest time picking out fabric scraps to make the last prompt, our final prompt for Roxy's Journal of Stitchery Volume 3. And of course, girls, you've given us a wonderful prompt and I'm going to use it of, of picnic. I spent the loveliest Mother's Day with my family having a picnic at the most beautiful location. And so uh, that's what I'm going to create here. And it's actually um, in the Blue Mountains in New South Wales. And it's where I took a lot of the photos that the, my first page of the stitchery project came from so it ties in really nicely to be the front piece of my work um, and I really like that sort of finishing where I began and that the picnic will reflect our Mother's Day where we had this picnic and then went for a, a bush walk and saw the amazing wildflowers and views on offer and then, you know, coming back home and et cetera, et cetera, down the garden path. I don't know that my um, project will actually fit anywhere in it, the words down the garden path. So I'm sort of thinking of doing a little um, add-on sort of wrap around loop with a piece on it that hangs a sign down the garden path. Anyway, let's get on with this. So. Uh, most of these fabrics actually came from my gorgeous gift from Christine. Create and craft with Christine. This is my little happy mailbox um, that I've been rummaging through. And there were lots of fabulous pieces in here that I could use for this prompt. So thank you so much, Christine. I had a lovely time going through so many suitable candidates for the picnic blanket, etc. Um, but in the end, I've decided on this one because it most closely reflects the colours of our picnic blanket, which is blue, plus also it sort of ties in nicely. And I knew I absolutely wanted to incorporate this into the piece because, you know, as soon as I saw it, I'm like, wow, that just makes me think of, think of the bush. It'll be the sort of strong part that holds it at the front, but I'm thinking of sort of trimming it maybe along here fussy cutting it along so it sort of just you know goes over the edge of the scene anyway I'm going to start with the sky so of course we get this vast sky and in the very distance you can see the skyline of the city and all the tall buildings in the city so I thought this piece would work really well for that to be the sort of city skyline here and it's sort of quite blue leading up to that so I'm actually going to turn it this way and this can be my expansive sky and uh, the city skyline and the sort of you know sea of blue which is actually a combination of trees and land and all sorts of things so let's get started with that shall we now it's always a treasure hunt once you've laid out all your fabrics everywhere to find where did you put the scissors <laughs> Leanne where did you put them Okay, here we are. Right, so what did I say? I was going to do that way, right? So I'm thinking I'm going to take it. It's going to be fun working on this. It's quite flimsy and, of course, my backing piece is mega flimsy. <laughs> Mm. 
Okay, so put that aside for another future skyline or seascape. Sorry for bumping the camera. Take it off here as well. So it was an absolutely beautiful day. We love um, going to this location because it's just incredible to be able to sit on this huge rock on a cliff edge um, and to see as far as Sydney. Huge expansive sky, trees all around, the golden sun glinting off the cliffs. It's just absolutely beautiful. She had one. Tuck that under. Why oh, she's got a nice fold there already, doesn't it? There, I think just a bit of a finger press <laughs> sort of now do I have my little applique pins? I want to be careful to not fold over too much. So my plan is to have the skyline, the big rock with our picnic blanket and our little picnic spread on it. to try and fit in a little ant because part of our enjoyment of our picnic is watching a little ant pick up a crumb and make his very long journey over to the ant nest carrying his champion prize. Isn't it, aren't ants incredible creatures? The weights that they can lift. Okay, so just a bit of visible stitching, big stitch on the back, little stitch on the front. I'm just using normal sewing cotton, you know, like you would use in your sewing machine. I 
been so grateful for this project. I really love um, that this piece of work reflects not only things that are important to me around in my environment, my home, the things I love doing like bushwalking, um, and now this very happy memory of a wonderful Mother's Day, but also um, that woven in it are the memories of what a wonderful experience this has been. How many beautiful people I've met, how many things I've learned to do through participating. You know, it's been an absolute joy to see the work of others participating in the challenge and how they interpret the prompts, what their works turn out like. Um, been wonderful chatting with them in the comments, getting to know them a bit more, the glimpses of their lives that they share. And also meeting all the lovely people that pop up in your own comments and the beautiful comments that they leave. Um, it's just been an experience I'm very, very grateful for. So thank you very much to Rachel and Sarah for putting this together for us. What a, what a journey. Prompt day is the most exciting day, and of course, and I'd stay up as late as I could on the Wednesdays waiting, and then then I had to say to myself, Leanne, for you, prompt day is essentially Thursday. <laughs> so I'd wait till Thursday morning to, to get the new prompt, see what we're doing next. So when they gave us the picnic prompt or do whatever you like. I was like, no, of course we have to do the prompt. We've had the opportunity to do what we like in between and all along anyway, so. So in terms of finishing this off, I've got to just, um, stitch down my other piece that has the irises on it and the birdhouse and then work out what I'm doing with my spool in case you haven't seen it before it's uh, just a cardboard tube which I glued two coasters on um, I've got more coasters because I want to thicken it up and thanks to Donna who had a really good video back in her collection about spools. I've got some ideas for what I want to try now. Maybe just uh, gluing the coasters together and sanding them, a bit of paint and some paper. So anyway, when I do that, when I, when I make my spool, I'll make another video and I'll link to Donna's video. Um, that gave me the idea. Thanks very much, Donna. Donna's going to participate in the next Roxy's Journal. Stitchery. Nothing's immediately jumping out to me about that yet. So I'm just waiting, letting the idea simmer. Um, I think it's because the, um, of the prompt of treasure chest. I, I don't really have bits of treasures, I don't think, <laughs> to incorporate. But maybe I do. That's what I'm waiting for the idea to come to me. I mean, I do have treasures, but they've already been made use of. You know, like... Um, piece of sequined lace that I sewed for my wedding dress but you know that's in my wedding album already or I don't know other treasures I have are things that I 
use and treasure each each day um, beautiful cup that uh, was given to me by my friends for my 21st birthday at university um, or my mum's and nan's crochet hooks my dad's paints um, my stitches are getting a little big there I was a little carried away so I'm chatting that's okay anyway I'm going to do some more stitching on this and I'll come back Okay, so my skyline's down next. I'm going to put down some tulle to represent the sort of green tree line and to tie it in with the piece that's sitting next to it. And so this is where stitching gets a bit crazy on purpose to make it all crinkle up. At the moment I've just loosely pinned it. You want to sort of screw it up and take a stitch. I do want it to cover that base there. Now, as well as the tree line, there was actually, of course, golden sandstone of the cliffs peeking through and glinting in the sun. Not sure if I'm going to be able to put that detail in or if it will just all become a bit much because this is a tiny space I'm working on and already a lot going on by the time we have the rock and the picnic blanket and the platter of food. The rainbow lorry keeps flying over. They're enjoying their Gravilla for breakfast. Okay, so I've got a bit of raw showing there, so I'm just going to pick up. Ta-da, raw edge gone. <laughs> I can't believe throughout this project how many times I fought with pins and all along I had these tiny little applique pins in my sewing bag. So that's one thing I'm super grateful to have learnt. It's how these little applique pins hold everything nicely and you don't get your thread caught around them as you're stitching away. Very blessed um, to have such a beautiful location so close to home. And I remember during lockdowns, and then we were allowed out within a certain radius um, for exercise. And I had 
so missed bushwalking. And then one day I decided to sort of work it out. I think there was a website or something that you can enter a location and it'll show you, you know, the radius around that. I can't remember, was it 5K or 10K that we were allowed out? And lo and behold, <laughs> to my complete joy and happiness, this uh, beautiful location was in that range. And so that's where we would go. I mean, we got a lovely sense of community um, doing the walks locally we have lots of walkways and in pockets of nature that they've preserved in this uh, estate that was just so lovely we did the rock painting Thing that kept us entertained to sit and paint rocks and have the joy of dropping them knowing someone will be surprised to find them and we love finding them ourselves when we found them do you know about um, rock painting there's all sorts of communities on line so so for example if you're in new south wales there's one called new south wales rocks and um people share what they've painted and other people share what they've found just a really lovely way to put a bit of surprise and joy into a stranger's day Okay, so I'm going to continue ruffling and stitching this down and I'll be back. So just sewing down the picnic blanket. I've sewed down a layer of fabric for the rock. It's actually just this one that I've used throughout the piece, but the rock's paler. So I've just turned it over, I used the wrong side thought why not
fabric's quite thick, so this is four layers essentially down here. Just doing a whip stitch on the edge, tie it together. So give a nice firm, you know, holding place to start the scroll. <laughs> I'm hooked on a bead all the way down the end of the scroll and unthreaded my needle. And I tied a knot in it. <laughs> It's raw on the back here, not a folded edge, so. Right up. Get rid of these little pins. She might put one there to make that behave as I'm trying to stitch. Fray a lot. I might just whip stitch rather than just running stitch. Hopefully, try and hold some of the weave together. Oops, picnic blanket. Sorry. Oh, I mean bread, bread board. some little buttons would work as uh, crackers if they'd be too thick and wouldn't look like crackers on the charcuterie board <laughs> hmm Can give it a try hey out of the way for a minute. Not much of the uh, ruffles I made for the trees ended up staying in the picture because I needed the rock to really jut out to have enough room to make a picnic blanket and the picnic spread. Okay, <laughs> might be time to tie that one off, eh? Maybe a bit short. Okay, so I'll just finish um, stitching this and come back. Good morning. It's uh, another day and I um, stitched everything down that I'd planned on my picnic so far. Um, the girls mentioned teddy bears picnic, so I found 
this gorgeous little teddy bear that camouflages and sits down here in the corner at the base of the tree. Um, picnic, I've just used beads to scatter around together for raspberries and blueberries. Um, tried little buttons for crackers, strung green ones together for some grapes. I had in my stash these little strawberries. This was a piece of fabric I'd bought for another project um, and didn't end up using it. The colours of it were a bit bright. Um, so I just put it away in my stash and so I've just cut off a little piece of that and fussy cut out the, the strawberries. Now this is supposed to be a wedge of cheese. <laughs> it, it's a fail. Um, I think I might try with some felt um, to cut a wedge of cheese and see if that can look more cheese-like and put that over. Um, and then over here I want to try and do an ant. <laughs> Little hero ant was a champion of our picnic. He gave us much entertainment watching him take his bounty, his little crumb, and travelling it all the way back to the ant nest. And so I'm just bringing up on my computer the source photo so I can try and have a look at what does an ant look like. <laughs> Oh. Okay, so it's sort of two long ovals make the body and then a, a bell shape for the head and then some legs and some antlers to hold his crumb. All right. So maybe just I'll try with a bit of satin stitch. Do you do this as well? Keep all your needles threaded just in case you want to use that same thread again. And then when it comes time to say you're struggling to find one that's not got a thread in it. Still in my fluffy dressing gown. It's about seven o'clock. I had a bit of a sleep in. I'm normally up before the sun. It's very, very cold. So. The days have been very warm though. They've been warming up to, gosh, about 18, 19 degrees. Beautiful, sunny, warm days. But yeah, the mornings are a bit frosty. I think it's been about four, four degrees. So not super cold, but cold in a house where I don't have the heating on. I can't use air conditioning for heating. It um, makes my skin burn. My my the skin on my face dries right out and goes bright red and very stingy. looking at my photo as I stitch. I have no idea how this will turn out, same as always, a bit of an adventure. Okay, now his head is a bit more of a bell shape, so I'm going to... Is that... That's quite big. There. It had to be a very big ant compared to the picnic. This piece has always been a bit of an Alice in Wonderland type adventure. Everything's out of proportion. Portion. 
I like to think that it's the emotional weight of an item that dictates its size. So for us, he was a big part of the enjoyment of our picnic. So he should have some spotlight. That stitch is not quite right. I'll go over it again. I probably have one more video on this challenge after this one where I show you uh, the finished spool and the whole project on it. Alright, next he's got these little bits <laughs> that hang on to his crumb. I need to give him a crumb. How am I going to give him a crumb? Got any scraps laying around? What could we use? There's poor Iris hanging around wondering what's ever going to become of her. Hmm. I mean, that would work, but it's the same as the rock, so that's going to look blend it in. Oh, maybe this piece of linen. And, uh, one wrap. nicely thank you there he is he's hanging on to his little crumb now he's a happy fella all right so now let's see we're going to give him these funny sort of antenna things that come out a bit straight And then I'll put an angle a bit. Are you there? And over here. Bit of an angle. All right, now we need some legs. So two legs from here. So that leg's going like this. I'm 
just thickening it up a bit. And then well, we can only see it come down a little bit. And then there's another here. Comes to about there. If it's a knee, I don't know. <laughs> you think so? So thicken up that top part of the leg. And then it comes out way past his body down here. interesting it sort of no longer looks like an ant the body's not thick enough in comparison to the legs Don't go away, Ant. The computer keeps going to sleep. Okay. other leg so he's got one little leg coming up here and then this one straight out to the side So that's my teddy bear's picnic finished. No, it's not. 
because I want to fix the cheese. I only have quite a light colour lemon felt or a mustardy greeny colour. I think I better go the light colour. Does that look more like cheese? I feel kind of more of a wedge. taking a needle a while to get through because um, the, the cheese I tried to satin stitch underneath is many, many threads long, wide thick. <laughs> See how thick it is? I don't know if it looks like cheese. <laughs> Does it look like cheese? I guess the trouble is I just stitched it flat, didn't I? So oh, it is what it is. So our balance right? I think our balance is right. I actually just drew some buildings off in the distance using a permanent alcohol marker um, in the skyline. I'm not overly happy with this for the, the trees and the vast valley. <laughs> um, but, you know, with the perspective, I had to make a lot of room for the picnic. So there you go. Picnic and then off for a bush walk to see the wildflowers. Come home through the gate. Look at the passion fruit. Truth be told, I'm glad this is here because we had to take down the passion fruit because it had grown insane. It had put up so many rootstock runners through the neighbor's property and all over their camellias. So sadly, bye-bye passion fruit. It's nice to remember it here. Greenhouse, flower pots. I love crocheting these little flowers. I have to make more. My beautiful friends, the lorikeets. There's some out in the tree there now. A nice place to sit. Your weary bones in amongst all the flowers. And another place to sit by the pond under the tree. And then I still have to stitch down the last two prompts prior to this. So, uh, favourite flower. And birdhouse. That will be the end of my scroll. Thanks for watching everyone. See you next time.